Hello there, Erica from Beyond 20 here. So we get a lot of questions from students, especially now that the Idol for Foundations exam is delivered exclusively online. So I wanted to take a quick minute to walk through some of the common questions that we have. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us at Beyond 20 if you have any additional questions beyond what we're gonna cover today. So um, some basic questions are things like, what are the basics of the exam? So whether uh, you're doing this in person or online that has not changed. So the basics are you have 40 multiple choice questions of varying level of difficulty and you have 60 minutes to complete those 40 questions. They are all worth the same amount of points. You don't get any uh, points detracted by answering the incorrect answer. So definitely answer all 40 questions uh, and each question has one answer. So it'll either be A or B or C or D. Um, so preparing for the online exam, some things to be aware of. You do want to download software from PeopleCert. It is called Exam Shield, And basically what the software does is it prevents you from opening up other, let's say tabs uh, online and Googling answers or anything like that. So uh, you'll wanna download that onto your computer or your laptop and test it out prior to taking the exam. So you'll want to test out your microphone, you're going to want to test out um, your your sound and things like that. Test out your video because there will actually be a live proctor watching you during the exam. Sounds super weird. Uh, once you start the exam though, you will forget that they are there. Um, so nothing to worry about um, in terms of the proctor. Uh, you do want to test it without uh, earphones or earbuds. Um, they need to be able to hear you and you aren't able to have um, earphones in or music playing or anything like that. So just be aware of that. Um, we've had some students where they will test it with earphones in and then the proctor will ask them to take them out. And um, there have been some technical difficulties. So just avoid anything like that. Um, but yeah, test it without um, earphones in. Uh, other things to be aware of. So you want to also prepare your room. I know a lot of us are working from home. Uh, you do at a minimum need to have a clean desk. They will actually ask you to turn your uh, video camera around because they want to see the room and your room can have clutter but you cannot have a, a desk that has clutter on it. Uh, you can't have any notes and in fact this is a closed book exam so no books, no notes. Uh, one thing I will tell you is that you can have blank paper and a pen or pencil. You'll want to show that to your proctor. You'll want to show them both sides of the paper. And then at the end of the exam, they'll want you to rip that up and get rid of it um, just to maintain the integrity of the examination. Um, so uh, do have extra paper with you. Do make sure you have a clean room. Uh, well, cleanish, clean desk. Uh, you want to be in a quiet space. If you've got a, a room with a door, um, they're going to want to see that, make sure that the door is closed, that no one's uh, feeding you answers or anything like that. Um, and you don't have any notes uh, with answers uh, around the room. Uh, if you have a, let's say, a second monitor, they're going to ask you to cover that um, with a blanket or something along those lines, um, just to make sure that, that um, uh, you know, everything is, is um, straightforward. Um, but yeah, just be aware of that. Uh, as far as what does the inner, inner user face, that's not the way to say that. What does the user, user interface look like? It is pretty straightforward. You'll see one question at a time. So once you click start exam, uh, a question will pop up and you have the ability to answer it uh, or you can mark it, save it for later. It's a pretty uh, intuitive user interface. So you can jump in between questions. Um, I would recommend that if any particular question is giving you problems, just to skip that, come back to it later. There will be plenty of time on the exam to go back and review your answers. Um, so yeah, user interface, pretty straightforward. Uh, what else? Uh, will I see my score at the end? So you will get a general score. So it'll say you got 35 out of 40 correct. Um, and it'll tell you in general areas kind of where you're stronger or weaker. So it'll say like general concepts, you're this percent, you know, you, you answer this percent of the questions or service management practices, you got this percent correct, but it won't tell you like answer one, you got right, answer two, you didn't get right. Uh, again, to maintain the integrity of the examination, 
They really don't give a ton of information, um, but it will tell you a little bit around where you're strong and where you're weak on the exam and you will get a, a final exam score. You will know that immediately as soon as you click submit and you will have access to, and uh, if, once you pass the exam, you'll have uh, access to your online certificate. Uh, and then the other question that we get a lot of is, um, are there any other exam test taking tips that you would recommend? And I would say, take your time on this exam, take the full hour if you need it. Uh, you do wanna get 26 out of the 40 questions correct. So don't leave any easy ones on the table. Um, again, make sure that you're going back to the ones that you're marking, but with every question, make sure that you read the full question you read all four of the answers fully and make sure that you're answering to what they're asking. Um, you've probably taken practice exam questions or if you haven't yet, you will leading up to the exam. Uh, don't make the assumption that what you see on the exam is exactly what you may have seen on a practice exam question because words matter and if they change one word that could change the whole intent of the question. So just be careful, slow down, take your time, you've got this, uh, you're going to be successful. And again, reach out to us with any additional questions. We are here to help. To answer the question, what do I need to have with me for the exam itself? Uh, so you want to have your ID with you because uh, before they start the exam, they want to actually confirm that it's you taking the exam and not your uh, best friend uh, that's willing to help you by taking the exam for you, which would be an awesome friend. Uh, but no, they want to confirm that it's actually you. So you'll have to hold up your ID uh, and show them that it is in fact the same person that's on the ID that has registered for the exam that's actually taking the exam. So make sure that you have your ID on you. Again, you want to have scratch paper with you. Um, other things that they will ask you to, uh, to move out of your way uh, when you take the exam is if you have your cell phone or a smartwatch or anything like that, you'll need to show them that you're putting it out of uh, out of arm's reach. Um, because it is a closed book exam, they also don't want you uh, texting anyone for the answers or, you know, casually looking at your um, at your smartphone or your smartwatch uh, and getting an answers that way. So um, yeah, just be, uh, just be aware that they'll make you put all of those things away um, at the start of the exam. So one last thing, and this is only for Beyond 20 students. If you get a 40 out of 40, uh, it's not super common, but it does happen. And if you get a perfect score, you will get some amazingly delicious brownies. So definitely keep that in mind and shoot for 40 out of 40. Uh, and let us know how you do on the exam so we can say, yeah, you're awesome. Uh, and if you don't pass, that's okay. We guarantee the quality of our classes. So you do get a free do-over. And uh, if you don't pass, uh, let us know so we can say, yay, you get to practice and take it again. Uh, and we're confident that you're going to do great. So don't let that be a worry at all. Uh, and um, yeah, let us know if you have any other questions. Thank you.